covering it's mentioned yeah. in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and one of the reasons why okay. Paul gives for the head covering is to do uh -huh. with the angels mm -hmm. and the, the angels um, is, a, is a reference is taught mm -hmm. in Genesis uh, chapter 6 mm -hmm. uh, where it says that the sons of God uh, saw the daughters of men and find, found them mm -hmm. to be attractive mm -hmm. and they came down and mated with them and that's how giants of old were made. I mean, I remember reading that in Enoch, which is not a, a canonical. I don't remember reading that in Corinthians. It's in Genesis um, chapter 6, where the angels saw the daughters yeah, of Yeah, yeah. And the yes. Them. Yeah, so but it, yeah, I'm just Corinthians. looking. He this is, okay, sorry, Bible. chapter. Yeah, he's very, he, you should be a Christian. <laughs> he's a very <laughs> nice said, guy. Yeah, okay. The miraculous, we believe in the Virgin birth. Mm -hmm. Jesus was created by God's command, be. Mm -hmm. Right, Jesus was not created, Jesus was born. There is a difference, right? Jesus came into the world, right? But he wasn't created. So Jesus exists, Jesus is eternally existing with the Father. You know, in the New King James Bible, it did say in Revelation chapter 3 that Christ is the beginning of God's creation. Mm -hmm. So he, he was created, or he's of creation, mm -hmm. and he's the beginning. So God's creation initiated or mm -hmm. began with Christ. So the Bible says that God created, so the, Jesus created all things. So he's, he's at the beginning of creation, but all things were created through him. Yeah, there's no verse that says that Jesus created all things. But what All things were created through him. Through him but yeah. Than yeah, it's the him. Trinity at work. So we can see the Trinity at work in the first three verses of the Bible, of the book of Genesis. You can clearly see. I'm going to get it up for you because I only have the New Testament on this book, if you bear with me. Um, his beginning was well, he was born, right? Huh? His beginning was well, he, was he was born, born, but he wasn't created. So there is a difference. He was born before. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So yeah. His spirit. But there's only one personality, and that is God. Well, he's Whereas the, the spirit doesn't have, have a personality. What does it mean? Mm -hmm. so, uh, when God speaks, he's mm -hmm. a word that doesn't have a personality. Because um, God says, "Let there be." Yeah. So I mean, the way we recognize. So if we go back to. Um, if we so if we go back to Genesis uh, chapter one from verses one to three, you see the Trinity at work, and I'll explain why. I'll read it very quickly. So the verse one it says, "In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth." So you could say that that's the Father. Verse two: the, the earth was without form and void, and the darkness was over the face of the deep, and the over the face of the waters, that's the, that's the Holy Spirit, and verse 3, and God said, let there be light, and there was light, and that's Jesus Christ. So, God said, there's no personality attached to them, so like the Spirit is like the breath of God, or the wind of God, but it's not a person, an actual person, like someone you can have a conversation with, or the, when God says, let there be light, so the word of God there is not a person or mm. someone you can have a, a dialogue, but it, it's, a, it's a thing or it's a expression. No, we don't, we don't recognize it. We recognize it as three persons of the same God. Um, so I, I have to... This you were the manager of the company mm -hmm. and you said, let there be um, coffee mm -hmm. and um, cakes and creams and biscuits. Mm -hmm. So obviously when you speak, um, your words, um, they're not like something that has a personality. Mm -hmm. but like you're, you're, you're the boss. What are and you mm -hmm. are telling your workers, you know, like what to do and what to get. Mm -hmm. But where Jesus himself is the person, the personality. Mm -hmm. You know what's interesting is, you know, in Hebrews, the letter of Hebrews, it actually says um, that previously God spoke to us through the mouth. Of yeah, the, the spirit, the spirit, the Holy Spirit yeah. entered the, the prophets. Yeah. The Hebrews seem to deny any preexistence of Jesus mm? because Hebrews says that previously God spoke to us through the lips of His prophets, but in these last days He mm. chosen to speak to us through His Son. Mm -hmm. so now, Jesus, the Jesus, uh, the the Bible. I think it's Hebrews. I'm gonna uh, get it up. One second. Um, one minute, please. Right. So if we go in Acts, for example, let me get it up. Right, Acts 3.15. So 
and he said to God that this, this, this man was full of yeah? Right, in, in the book of Acts, it talks about, in verse 3, it says, um, you, uh, from verse 14, you disowned the holy and righteous one and asked what, what a, that a murderer be released to you. You killed the altar of life, but God raised him from the dead. So Jesus Christ is recognized as the altar of life. Now, you see the Trinity of work as well. When Jesus says that I, uh, if you uh, destroy the temple, I will raise it up in three days. The Holy Spirit uh, is also written that the Holy Spirit will raise God, um, will raise God, and uh, the Father will raise God. So you have all three persons and also God Himself raising Jesus Christ from the dead. And Jesus says that He also willingly put Himself on the cross. So this is a misunderstanding where um, you know Muslims say, oh. How can he be God when he was um, so weak, you know, that he died on the cross? But actually, Jesus Christ willingly put himself on the cross. Well, I mean, author of life there can be reference to Jesus brings about salvation, so Jesus gives life. Mm -hmm. so, in that sense, so do you agree that Jesus gives life? Do you agree that the Bible says that Jesus gives life? Eternal life. Eternal life. So how can a human being give eternal life? The message that he brings is eternal life. Mm -hmm. so anyone who believes in Jesus and follows him, have life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's true. That's true. But but uh, if you believe in Him, but then it's Him who gives you eternal life. It is Jesus who forgives. Now, a man cannot um, give eternal life. It can only be God that forgives your sins. It can only be God that gives you a new spirit, a new birth. It can only be done through a, a divine intervention. Do you pray the Lord's prayer? I do pray. So the way we pray is that we pray to the Father in heaven. We pray in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. So um, it's all the, we, I pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And the reason for that is because the Father is holy and so is Jesus. But the only way to even approach the Father is through the person of Jesus Christ because the, the some part of the Trinity, he is the one that reconciles us to the Father. Yeah. Um, and he says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know. Yeah. If Jesus can forgive sins, he would have said, I, Jesus, forgive you. Yeah. So you do not know what you're doing. Right. Instead, he prays to the Father. Mm -hmm. So Jesus, in his humanity, he prayed to the Father. And he, he, he's the intercessor, he intercedes for us, so he asked the Father, so that's why we do pray to the Father in the name of Jesus, so Jesus is the, is the one who intercedes for us, yes. in the Bible does Jesus say, I forgive your sins? He does say that. Um, he, yes, let me get it up. So I was actually reading these verses with Osman, so I'll, I will read it again. Um, you go to like Matthew chapter 9 verse 8. Matthew chapter 9 verse 8. Why specifically you want to go to that? There it says people praise God for mm -hmm. giving such authority unto men. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Jesus didn't forgive sins, but he had the authority to say to the man, your sins are forgiven. Yeah, but he, that's, yeah, yeah, yes, he says, all authority has been given to me. Um, so, yes, he has the authority, but it's a divine authority, like he, yeah. So given to him, but by divine authority, because yeah. it's given to him. Do you know, I can't actually stay too long in here, because um, I, so I say? I wanted to say one last yeah. bit, right? So um, about from from the, from the Bible, right? Yeah. So I'm so i I'm actually really love talking <laughs> to you. You're very kind. You're a very nice guy, and I'm I, I appreciate it because this I, is how. I'll give you the last say because I have to say as well. So, yeah. Thank you. No, do you know what? I want to say on the camera that this is how um, a Christian and Muslim dialogue should be. It should be respectful. And uh, it should be based on facts and, you know, we cannot go beyond what we know either. Like, I'm not a theologian, I'm not a teacher, yeah, but I can say that hundreds of millions of people have experienced something called being born again. It's something that goes beyond knowing the Bible, um, knowing the scripture. It's, it's a spiritual rebirth and it's a real thing. Many people, you can look on YouTube, many people have found Christ and it's, it's a real supernatural experience. Um, but but thank I may believe you too, I, I just have to do my prayers. Um, okay, can I read the last verse to the camera? I'll watch the video and, 
You don't have a minute for me to read uh, two okay, minutes. Okay. I'll read. Um, I just want to read one last bit. Um, so thank you so much. Right. Um, sorry, I'll find it now. <laughs> okay. Um, we gonna be on YouTube. Yes, and you are as well. So, so in G Jesus, uh, so in John six, right from verse um, thirty-five, Jesus declared. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you've seen me and still do not believe. All those, you know, so he's talking about how he is the bread of life, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, um, but in here it says at the end, verse 40, For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up the last day. So. The Bible is very clear that Jesus Christ is the one who forgives sins, is the one who gives eternal life. Now, is everybody's choice whether to believe that or not, but that's the whole teaching of the Bible, that's the gospel. Thank you so much.